This week I learned that my new least favorite word is pedantic. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another weekly update, the last for the month of February. It's a a month that's been kind of back heavy because I have lots of things to talk about this week, beginning with what am I reading? Well, guys, I finished The Tyranny of Faith by Mr. Richard Swan, and I think it's kind of a mix to positive for me. Uh, I I know that everybody is pretty much putting this as like their book of the year so far. Uh, I still prefer book one, I think. I think what I liked about book one was it did seem very grounded. It seemed very, uh, you know, small setting in small towns, you know, kind of a detective story. And while I like a lot of the ideas that he leans into with this, like I I would say that the the whole medieval horror subgenre that I've talked about recently, I feel like he really leans into that. And that stuff's really, really good. But there's some stuff that he does with Conrad in this. I just, I just didn't care for it. Almost kind of, it almost kind of seemed like character assassination uh, with the first book. And I know that we're dealing with this from Helena's point of view. A lot of these things can be the whole unreliable narrator. I get that. I get that. But uh, I mean, but as far as the positives, yeah, I, I think Helena was much better in this book. I liked her a lot, a lot more in this one. It's just there was like a, a, a middle plot where it was very much like a side quest, and then when you kind of see why that was there. I don't really necessarily think that the payoff was worth it. So it, it does suffer a little bit from middle book syndrome for me. And I know that I'm kind of on an island with that because everyone else has reviewed this has just been, you know, over the top praise with it. And I do think it's a good, it's a, it's, it's a worthy sequel. Don't misunderstand me, but I definitely think that I like the first book a lot more. But I will be continuing with book number three, when it does come out, I believe, next year, if, uh, if Mr. Swan holds to the same schedule that he has with the first two books and then i did also move this up and i did finish guys tress of the emerald sea by brandon sanderson i know you're thinking wow you finished both of these those are pretty big books but this one guys read stupid quick i I would say this is probably the lightest brandon sanderson book i've read since emperor's soul uh i've had a lot of people ask me how i feel about like i I enjoyed it I, i liked it a lot you guys know how i feel about nautical fantasy i'm not really a fan so the section in the middle where they're just kind of hanging out on a pirate boat, it's kind of like, all right, here we go. Uh, but yeah, again, I think that the last act and the first act really were great. They really did. I really did enjoy myself. It was one of those things where I just, I didn't realize how much I missed the Cosmere until I kind of got back to it. Uh, he leans into some ideas that, uh, you know, some things you might recognize, some things I think you don't. I think you could be perfectly fine if you want to start here. I, I think that uh, you could definitely start here. I mean, there'll be some things that you won't understand, like you won't understand about whole when the reveal of who the narrator is, you probably won't get that or see the relevance there. But I don't think it'll change the story for you, Annie. I think you could join it on your own. But it is, guys, it is a, it is a YA book. I would definitely say it is maybe junior high or just above like early teen reading level, I think. Not that that's bad. I did a video on that this week, obviously. I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing, but I have had some people ask me. So if you're looking for something that's uh, like Stormlight Archive, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. But I would say I, I appreciate this more than I did Rhythm of War or Dawn Shard, I think, so... Uh, if you're curious about it, I'd say go ahead and pick it up because uh, I did enjoy it. And the reason I'm doing this so late, guys, is uh, I started reading The Outsiders this morning uh, by S.E. Hinton, and I finished it. Uh, it's very good, guys. And, and before you freak out, like, oh, my God, you finished it in one day. 180 pages, guys, and it's a junior high reading level. It's something you're going to fly through most likely. Uh, once you get past the absurdity of some of the character names, I think this book just absolutely flies by. But yeah, it's, it's every bit uh, pretty much as it was sold to me. It is an amazing coming-of-age story. It's beautiful, and the only problem I have with it, guys, is I wish it had been longer. It really did seem like it was over and done with before I really felt like I was settled into that world. You know, I was having a great time with it, and then it's just kind of over and uh, again, I, I think she tells a full story here. Don't don't misunderstand me. But uh, I, I do wish it had been just a little bit longer. But yeah, absolutely great book. And I, I can't believe it took me this long to read it, honestly. Uh, it's one of those things, like we all have like that one thing where people are just like, oh, oh my God, you haven't seen that movie or you haven't read that book. Uh, this one was one of mine. This is one of the ones I could not explain why. It was never on one of my reading lists in high school. So maybe that's just how I kind of passed it up there. But uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those that uh, I'm glad that I finally did... Uh, like Call of the Wild, I really did finally go back to and, and explore and, and understand why it's so beloved, why it's still considered a classic all these years later. It's a great, great story. And really kind of something that I didn't expect with it, it's going to give more significance to when we do our Gone with the Wind reread uh, in the middle of the year. So if you've read it, you know. So those who know, definitely know. But great book, guys. Pick it up. You can do it in a day. It really isn't difficult at all. And me and my kid did finish 
Percy Jackson and the Titans curse. And I think that we both liked it because it was the first one that we both haven't been able to figure out everything by the end. The first two books, we both kind of figured out the little mystery. Uh, this is the first one where I felt like both of us were surprised a little bit by some of the some of the stuff that happened at the end. And the, the last act was a lot of fun. It really was really, really great. So again, guys, like I said, that, that I feel like that is, is something obviously that is well, but like, like the Outsiders is like Tolstoy compared to Percy Jackson. It really is. Uh, it, but I'm having a great time reading that with my kid. It's a lot of fun. You don't take it too seriously. I think you'd have a, a great time with it. But I, I, I'll be honest, it isn't anything I'd probably be reading, you know, on my own. But I'm having a blast reading it with him. And us talking about it every day has is, is just been a lot of fun. And uh, it makes me sad that, uh, you know, we're, we're already halfway through that series, but there are other books in that universe. And we're going to talk about those here in a second, and that's going to start, guys, with talking about what am I going to read. So I am taking the kids camping uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, actually, when you're watching this, I'll already be there. Uh, we will be there. But uh, it was uh, one of those things where it was the last kind of a camping trip where both my kids, because one kid's going into Boy Scouts and the other one's staying in Cub Scouts. So it's like the last one where both of them are going to get to go to camping together, and they're kind of going to be on their own, at least until the younger one reaches Boy Scouts, maybe. We'll see. But uh, that will be taking up most of my time this weekend, so I don't know how much uh, reading I shall get done. But uh, since my oldest is going to be there, I am going to take uh, The Battle of the Labyrinth. That's the next Percy Jackson, the, penult- the penultimate Percy Jackson, the Olympians book. We did read the first like chapter and a half or so. Uh, really leaning in all the stuff about Pan, Pan's Labyrinth, so that's exciting stuff. So we're having a great time, and a lot of people have said this was their favorite book in the series. So uh, we shall see what happens there. And guys, I've got a few days left before the new month starts, so uh, I thought I might just go ahead, and even though I know I did that poll, not really a poll, but I had that video asking you to give your comment, I'm not saying that this won. I'm just saying this is really, really thin, and I got this book. It's a uh, Ryan Cah- 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 Cahill, Cah- Cahill. However, I say it, someone's going to tell me I'm saying it wrong. Uh, Ryan has watched videos on the channel, and he's never once complained to me about how I say his name. So I'm sticking with Ryan Cahill for now until he tells me to stop it. But this uh, is a novella that takes place before the series starts, and he has an explanation on the first page. It says about the reading order is you can read book one and then read this, or you can read this first and then read book one. It really just kind of depends on you. If you want to start with this one and just kind of be thrown into that world, you know, in media res, that's cool. Uh, I think you can do that. But if you want to, uh, you know, get to know the little world and know the world in a little bit of a, a slow burn first, you know, then I think that you should probably go ahead and do it the other way around. But either way, it seems like it does work. And since I went ahead and got this one and it's 100 pages, I'll take this with me on the camping trip and probably finish it up there. So uh, I don't intend to read straight through Bound in the Broken or anything like that. I just figured, hey, I can go ahead and pick up this novella to get a taste of, of what Ryan is doing here. And that can be, a, you know, no real worries because as of March 1st, we do start Morningstar. You know, and I don't want to start early because that is part of a read along. If I, if I finish the fall really, really quick, I might just go ahead and start the the Robin Hobb book before I start Morning Morningstar. Just because, like I said, that is a, a read along that I'm trying to stay uh, consistent with and read with other people and being done with it before they even start on March the 1st would just be really, really rude. But that's, uh, that's all the plans I got. And so we'll see what happens on this camping trip. But guys, let's go ahead and talk about this week on the channel. Did uh, lots of fun things. Uh, did uh, Just talked about YA. I did a video talking about some, some young adult series that I would like to try or books. Uh, and and I, I knew you know, make a video like that, guys. You know it's going to get a lot of pushback. You're going to get all the things. Uh, you know, YA is not a genre. It's an age demographic. Okay, I understand that. That book's not actually YA. Look, that's a conversation that a debate that's always going to happen, guys. I mean, people have it about Red Rising that they tell me they think Red Rising's YA. And I'm like, have you read past the third chapter of book one? But I, I, it's just, it's. I understand that a lot of things people, I don't know, they're almost like embarrassed by it, and they don't ever want to admit that something is YA because they can like, you can like, you can like YA guys. There's nothing wrong with liking YA, and that's why I kind of wanted to get across it because I had been told, you know, I absolutely hate YA because I made a video three years ago where I used the term YA garbage, and that just kind of stuck. And so I, I guess I earned that. So I just want to talk about some series that I was interested in. Uh, some some standalone books I was interested in. I've already read one of them was The Outsiders, and I've already read that. So it's just uh, something I think is, uh, it can be a fun palate cleanser, you know, because you can get into them and you can have a good time with their good stories. You don't have to feel like you've got to commit to memorizing 500 names and 
20 different prophecies and and 30 different kingdoms and things like that. It's it's just it's a, a lot easier to digest. So I, I think there's always room for books like that. Uh, yeah, snarky comments aside, I had a great time talking about that, and I am going to enjoy diving into a lot of those series. Uh, I guess I got to do apologize for Mars Trilogy and Left Hand of Darkness. Apparently, both of those. I explained the whole uh, Mars Trilogy one, why I made that mistake. I saw it at a junior high book fair when it was new, and I guess I just assumed that just kind of always stuck with me. I could have swore I saw it in a young adult section in Barnes & Noble recently, and that's kind of what jogged my memory on it, but I might be wrong on it. So that was my mistake. And with The Left Hand of Darkness, I guess that might have just been me uh, just assuming that it was YA because most of Ursula Le Guin's uh, material is, is YA. So that was my mistake. I didn't do my research on that one, but the Mars Trilogy was an honest mistake. So it's going to happen again, but I, I do thank you guys for all of your feedback in that video. I did my TBR for March. All the things I plan to read in March, it's going to be a stacked month. But here's the thing is every month I start this and I say, oh, I don't know how I'm going to finish all this. And then I get like I am right now and I've got all this extra time before the new month starts. So I think just dedicating myself to, you know, staying off social media uh, or at least spending less time on social media and making sure that I focus on reading more has helped me make sure I stick to my, my actual reading goals. But I do have, you know, I think I planned six books in February and one of them is a novella and the other five are pretty thick b books, you know? So it's one of those where I'm like, hey, uh, it's, it's a long month, thank God. But, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, I do have like a list of if I've got to cut one, uh, this is the what will happen. But uh, I never like to do that. But, you know, I like to have that, that trap door in case I need to get out of it. But uh, those are the ones that I am very excited to do. Obviously, you know, most of them, Robin Hobb and Pierce Brown are the big ones. I'm continuing into the multiverse. I'm continuing my Song of Ice and Fire reread. And I'll be continuing with, uh, with Mike Shackle's uh, Last War series, which I'm very, very excited about. And other things. So check that out if you plan to read any of those you want to read along with me. I tell you when in the month I plan to read I, each of those. So very, very ambitious. But you know what? It's better to, you know, shoot for the stars, right? That way, if you get just the moon, you're okay. Uh, I did my Golden Sun review. Uh, I think that I'm only going to do the reading excerpt uh, introduction for the first three because it's I'm already starting to have a hard time finding art for those things. So I, I love the... I love the quotes and, and things like that from that series. That's what makes that series so great for me is, is Pierce's dialogue and his inner thoughts. I think that's really, really great. His writing is just awesome. Uh, but I, I think with with the level of interest I'm getting in those reviews, it's, it's not really beneficial to me to spend hours making those introductions. So I'm going to continue to do the reviews uh, after that, but I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll cut out the reading introduction after book number three, but it's mostly because it's hard to find art for those series. But uh, as far as Golden Sun, uh, it's one of my favorite science fiction books of all time. I still agree with that even after the reread. I, I did really feel this. Uh, I, I did say I'm anxious to see if I end up liking Morningstar better this time around because it might be just, a, you know, it's, it's hard to replace that feeling I had of when I was ho-hum on Red Rising and then Golden Sun completely blew me away where I was like, this is amazing. It's hard to replicate that feeling because in my memory, Morningstar was every bit as good as Golden Sun, but I couldn't tell you why I thought that, uh, you know, Golden Sun was better, except maybe just it. Uh, I'm an Empire Strikes Back fan. It gives me very, very Empire Strikes Back vibes. Did some shorts this week. Going to continue to do those. Uh, kind of mixed reactions to those, obviously, still. I'm not getting, you know, numerous thumbs down on them anymore, so that's good. People are just ignoring them if they don't like them. Again, that's something I do, guys, because uh, sometimes I want to talk about something and I don't have 20 minutes of discussion in me. And it's also uh, something that I don't feel like could justify an entire video. And if I don't want to review a book, I can do a quick little rapid review. So I do rapid reviews for A Man Called Uva by uh, Patrick, no, pa Frederick Backman. I keep wanting to say Patrick Bateman. I guess I got to, I guess I have to read American Psycho. I will see. I did one for Golden Fool by Robin Hobb. Now, I talked about both of those on last week's weekly, up weekly update, so I'm not going to talk about them again. Again, just 60 second rapid reviews. I think that's fun. And then I, I, a new series that I can start it uh, with, with the Michael Crichton question was just a frequently asked questions. It's things that I get. Like if I have, like, for example, I have a review of Golden Sun up and I had a question that was nothing to do with Golden Sun. I get that a lot. I get a lot of questions that people will just, no matter what the video is, they'll be like, I know this isn't on topic, but can you answer this question for me? And this one was, should I read the Dune sequels? I get that question a lot. So I feel like I should address that. And it's one of my more viewed shorts. So that's cool. Uh, so, you know, I might get a shiny nickels worth out of ad revenue on it. That's what's hilarious is people think those are, 
The only reason I'm doing shorts is for ad revenue. Guys, It's I have one that has 10,000 views and I think I've earned two cents on it. So I'm definitely not doing this for ad revenue. That's just, like I said, I have other ideas I like to get out. It's fun to have content on the channel every day, I think. And again, new people might be able to give you a try for 60 seconds longer, easier than they would for 20 minutes, I think. So that's why I'm going to continue to do that. I did a guest spot on another channel. I talked to Tori over at Tori Talks. And we talked for, gosh, about two and a half hours on Thursday night. It was a lot of fun. I think Tori is really, really awesome if you haven't checked her out. Uh, her channel is terrific. Uh, you know, she's a part-time writer, part-time booktuber. So she splits up her time with that. And it's, it's obviously uh, interesting to hear her take on a lot of these things as an author. I think that's a lot of fun. But she's a big, big Red Rising fan like me. And uh, yeah, she had a really neat idea on there where it was basically a, a game we used to play as kids where we'd take like two awesome songs and you had to pick one and uh, nuke one. And she did that with, uh, with a lot of Stephen King versus fantasy books for me. Made me pick between those. And that was a, that was a ton of fun. So I had a blast with her. I hope you guys will check her out. And uh, I hope to talk to her on the channel again someday. She's a really, really kick-ass chick. And I'm so, so thankful that she asked me to come on because I had a blast. And on Mike's Media Reviews, I, I did do my live stream again. This time live with Chris Ferracchio and AR Witham for Friday Night Live. Now, again, Friday Night Live is just talking about all of the movies and music and TV news and things like that, or just anything, not necessarily news, just if, not books. It's not book stuff. You know, it's any kind of media that's not really books. So I thought it was a great idea to have two authors come on and not talk about books. So of course, books come up, you know, but it's just, it's, it was a lot of fun. I think I, I like doing that on my own, but every once in a while, hey, I don't have a problem throwing some guests in there, especially uh, two people like Andy and Christopher, who are just really awesome to talk to. And, uh, you know, I felt like the three of us could talk about anything. I'm glad I got to introduce those two because I think they have a lot in common and, and I knew that they would get along. And it was a lot of fun talking with both of them. So guys, how about a little bit of next week plans? I do got some things planned. I'm going to be doing a spoiler talk live stream with HowlerPod again for Golden Sun. That'll be happening Tuesday night. This time I'll make sure I remember to have the comments open so I can see your comments. Uh, that should be a ton of fun. I think that uh, they are awesome people and I, I think they are pretty much like the authority on the Red Rising saga and I can't wait to pick their brain about this book. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, I'll be doing my, my wrap up for February and my book of the month. Again, if you've watched these weekly updates, you can probably decipher what my book of the month is going to be, but there's lots of things to talk about with that little wrap up there. And I always love doing that wrap up. I think I'm going to do my first Brandon Sanderson review in like two years, guys. I'll be doing my uh, Tress of the Emerald Sea review. I, I know I'll be the last one pretty much out there to do it, but I think that you know enough people are interested in my feedback on that that I feel like I could probably go ahead and talk about that because there are lots of people uh, you know, that aren't necessarily younger audiences that are curious if they should, uh, if they if they would like Trust of the Emerald Sea or not. I, I think I can tell you why I think that you will. And uh, I'll go into it a little more in depth there, but it'd be fun to talk about the Cosmere again. And it isn't just like a tier list or a ranking video. That should be a lot of fun. Uh, probably, uh, as far as shorts, I'll probably do a rapid review of Tyranny of Faith because I don't usually, unless it's a read along, I don't usually review sequel books on the channel because if people haven't read the first one, they're not interested in knowing about the second one. So I'll probably just do a rapid review about that one. And then I do have a talk about nothing scheduled. And I had to do like a, a guest shuffle. I had a guest uh, scheduled and and then another guest that had, had previously been unavailable became available again. So I had to shuffle that around. So I've got I've got March and April's guest for Talk About Nothing booked. But I'm very excited about this one because it's been a, a long time coming. We've been communicating about this for like six months now. But finally, guys, I get to have someone on Talk About Nothing that has a bigger channel than mine. And she has an amazingly huge channel. This, of course, is Murphy Napier. Uh, I can't explain how excited I am to talk to her and just find out what all goes into building this incredible empire that she's made. You know, I would love to hear some of her ideas and just, you know, just shoot the shit, see what happens. Because uh, I've always thought that she was, of the more successful booktubers, she was always the most down-to-earth and friendly one. And I'm just, I'm so excited to talk to her, finally. Uh, it's going to be a blast. We've, been, we've had a hard time getting this scheduled, but I'm glad it's finally going to happen. And that's supposed to be happening. It's actually going to be a kind of a weird time slot because of availability. That's going to be happening Friday night, March the 3rd. And that's going to be a kind of a later one. It's going to be 9 o'clock my time in Texas. So it's going to be a little later, but uh, I don't I don't expect it to be like a super short one or anything like that. It's just, it's just when we are both available. But it is a Friday night. You guys can party with us. So there won't be a Friday night live on Mike's Media Reviews, but there will be a Friday night live on the channel here. And I cannot wait to do that talk about nothing. Should be a ton of fun, guys. Before I go, there are a couple of 
TV and movie talk things. Uh, I haven't even watched The Last of Us, guys, but I said last week I'm not I'm not going to talk about Last of Us anymore because everybody apparently loves it except me. So uh, I, I don't like to be a wet blanket, but I think I can just show you really, really quick why I'm not liking it because right now, I think you can find about 1,200 articles out there right now about why they made that change to Joel in the last episode. And I'm just sick of seeing that every episode. Why they made that change. Here's the justification and why it's okay. And just, it's not for me. Anyway, anyhow, uh, there was a teaser trailer for Shadow and Bone. And before you guys laugh, we got together, we as in me and some of my patrons got together, and we watched season one of Shadow and Bone on Netflix together. And I think we went up expecting to just like clown it, make fun of it. And then we we're like, it's actually pretty good. It actually really is. It's like the Shadow and Bone stuff was like okay, but the Six of Crows stuff was really, really good. And we liked that a lot. And the season two trailer looks kick ass. It looks pretty good. And I think the thing with that, guys, is I always had a feeling that that was going to end up being pretty good because it has really, really competent people in charge. You can look at the showrunner and the writer. Like that. These are people that actually have a lot of success on adaptation and, and, and making good quality television. So it's one of those things where I said, I guarantee that show will be better than the books, for sure. But I haven't read the Six of Crows books. It's on, that was on that, that YA list, even though I got a lot about that's not YA. you know. But hey, again, I think they can get that with everything. But that, that trailer looks really, really great. And uh, obviously, I'm always down for more Ben Barnes because that is my dude. But uh, it looks awesome. Uh, I, I'm going to have a great time watching that again with the patrons that want to watch it again. And uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Check out the trailer if you haven't. Uh, I've seen a lot of people asking me about uh, Yellowstone. Uh, I'm not current on it, but I've seen a lot of people saying that Yellowstone is kind of falling off a cliff. And I have my theories as to why, hearing that Kevin Costner wants to leave now and things like that. I think the problem with this is it's the it's the... The Disney Plus problem is like I call it is they're they're, they're expanding everything too fast. Uh, it's like you have Yellowstone, you had one successful Yellowstone series, and now you've got four spinoffs of Yellowstone, like almost immediately. It's like I understand in this whole streaming thing, this streaming war, they need to have you know this content, content, content. But I think it's watering down a lot of things that are actually great. We've seen what it's done to the MCU, we've seen what it's done to Star Wars. Now we're seeing what it seems like it's doing to Yellowstone again. I don't know. I haven't watched the most current season. I didn't have as many problems with the season before like everyone else did. Everyone else just thought it was like super boring. Uh, I don't like Beth, but I haven't liked Beth since you know season two when you guys were still yes queen with with her. I I thought she was annoying back then too. So apparently that's finally started great on some of you guys' nerves. But I mean, uh, Yellowstone without Kevin Costner would be kind of tough. Uh, I, I do think it's a, a, a really well-written show and it's got a strong enough cast. But I mean, honestly, Costner is what got me there in the first place. So it'd be really, really tough. So if he if he is leaving the show, I hope it's done in a respectful way and it's done very, very well. But uh, I do think that, uh, uh, is it Tyler Sheridan? Taylor Sheridan? Is that the guy who writes it? I think he's expanding that, that universe too fast. And he needs to slow down. Even though I have heard 1883 and 1923 are really good. Really, really good. But that's just my opinion. I think they need to stop spinning these shows off so quick. And because you think you're just, you're oversaturating your audience. They're just like, they feel like, oh, I've got to watch it all to understand everything. And not everyone's got time to take on three or four shows when they only liked one. But that is just my take. So guys... How's your weekend going? How was your week? Why don't you drop in the comments? Let me know what you're reading, what you're watching, what you're listening, what you're playing. Uh, I'm going to be playing more Atomic Heart when I get back. I, I've only played like the first half hour of it. Uh, that was a day one on Game Pass, but I did like it. Did maybe there was like this this little segment in uh, Fallout Three where you went to this town that had like been taken over by robots. Imagine a whole game like that. That's kind of the vibe that I got from it at the very beginning. But uh, I, I'm interested to see how it goes because it is uh, mixed to positive reception, I think, going on out there. But uh, again, day one on Game Pass, you know, it doesn't cost me anything except my subscription fee to play. And I'm excited to do that. So guys, drop in the comments. Have an awesome weekend. And I will talk to you there. <laughs>